Hi, Mark. Tony. How are you? I'm all right. Winter's coming, I reckon. Yes. The Starks were right. Exactly. It's yeah, almost yeah. it's almost jacket season. Well, we're kind of in betwixt right yeah. now. You're jacketless, and I am jacketed. I debated it. You debated it? On the way here. Yes. What was well, before I left, actually. I wasn't me, in the car. Take me through the debate. It was... Okay, let's roleplay the debate in your head. Can oh. I be the voice of summer, okay? And you be the voice of winter okay. in your head going, oh. Ooh, might need a jacket. <laughs> oh, nah, just, I love having my limbs <laughs> free and open. I haven't went, worn underwear for like three months. My dick is just slanging about. Wait, is this on my channel or your channel? <laughs> <laughs> so we're on my channel and within 30 seconds, we're already talking about your schlong. No, we're talking about your schlong. Oh, I'm, you are uh, talking about my schlong. Yeah, yeah, I'm the voice of summer in your head talking about You're the your, voice of my schlong. Yeah, you're schlanging that dick round. Hi, Ready? Dad. <laughs> if you want to switch off. What's up, Gaz? <laughs> I won't blame you. That's Tony, there, eh? There's another hour of this. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Can I just say? You can say. Probably across the board. Yes. One of the greatest weekends of rugby in recent memory. Yeah, very good weekend. No, what what are you doing here? <coughs> Super well, rugby was cracking. I know. Six Nations was cracking. I'm not. There were no crap games. 100%. But I'm not objecting to that. But I feel like we're. You were Too talking, soon to go into rugby. Yeah, I. Oh, we need to get back to schlong chat. I know. Okay. Like, I, I started talking about slanging that dick round, you know, a bit of shit chat. And then. Right. I oh, went straight into the rugby. We're like three minutes, like less than a minute in. You're talking about rugby. Oh, sorry. What podcast? Is uh, this a proper rugby podcast? Yeah, true. If you put us onto a proper rugby podcast, it was a very good weekend of rugby. You watched some? Uh, I watched. I watched more than I could handle, really. Yeah. And I was like, and it wasn't. Didn't feel like a chore. No. Sometimes I was at, in this job, but no, it's not a job really. But in this, you you have yours is a job, but when what we do. You kind of, you're like, oh God, I have to watch bloody Italy versus Scotland. Italy versus Scotland. And I'm thinking, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sorry, Scottish I, I, fans I, I, and the couple of Italians who tune in. no interest in watching it. Because like, uh, you think you know what the result's going to be. And you think it's probably, if they both play badly, it's going to be a bit of a shocker of a game. But no, that was... It was a banger. An absolute banger. It's one I didn't watch fully, but I watched, yeah, I watched most of the games. How's that? It's not bad for you. Yeah. Well, we'll go through them at some stage. But tell me more about you. Like, because I want to really veer off the track from rugby for a moment. Some viewers may have noticed that we didn't have a podcast last week. This is true. You were away gallivanting. I was gallivanting in Fiji of all places. That's why you're in the jacket, because you were like, New Zealand, it's cold. I came back and it was freezing because it was like 34 degrees and people should not be playing rugby over there right now. But they are. As the Crusaders <laughs> found out. It is a, we'll talk, I want to talk about that, but like, that's a serious, that's one of the key advantages for the Fijians is the climate. It is insane. I played two rounds of golf over there, two nine holes. And you were knackered. Oh, I was. You like, schlong. <laughs> schlong was looking great because it's so hot that everything just sort of expands out and just sort of. You were slinging more, swinging more than just golf swinging clubs. Swinging that dick round. I was like, use this as a putter. Uh, on the 18th, I'm like, put your pants back on. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, what island were you on? I was just on the main island. I was okay. on uh, Yanutha, Yanutha, um, which is just off the main island. Okay. Which is by, accessible by a land bridge, essentially. Okay. But had a great time over there in Fiji. It's a lovely people, very, very hot. So, yeah, did two nine holes. And it was like, you know how there's like those ultra marathons that people run in the hottest places on earth just yeah. to be the hardest? But I felt like I was doing that. Playing golf. <laughs> just playing golf. In Fiji. Just drenched in sweat. I like went out to... We went to the feed, lovely Fijian lady to get a green a, a green time, uh, and she looked at us like you stupid white guys. Why do you want to play golf in this? Like even she thought that. Yeah, because well, she knows that we're white. Oh, and, like, okay. Even you see the Fijians walking around, and they walk around under the trees all the time because right. it's just brutal. The sun. You know? Okay, having lived in China, in Wuhan, which is known as one of China's three furnaces, and one of the hot steamy spots. I feel it. 
I remember being from New Zealand. We we've got a pretty mild climate over here. We do. The Even worst we get is a fair bit of rain. Yeah, and when it's hot, it's like twenty seven. Yeah, I mean, people is, like people are like, oh, I'm stinking hot. Yeah, today. <laughs> no, it is genuinely very hot under the sun here. You're very yeah. easy to get sunburned, but it's oh. not like you walk ten yards and you're suddenly drenched you're in sweat. Drenched in sweat. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had a terrible experience. I bet my brother in golf, eat shit, Simon, uh, for the first time ever. Oh, you, he went uh, as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole family went. Uh, oh, my nice. brother's sisters, my, it was my, went from my mother's 70s, all oh, the kids and right, stuff. Right, yeah, right. yeah, it was great. It was a great little family trip. Um, but I bet him for the first time ever, which was, uh, and I was just, I mean, we had to hire clubs over there and stuff, and okay. I was walking back to my room, and I was just giving him <laughs> shit the whole way, going, I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, such a perfect day. <laughs> like, just digging this sort of shit to him all the way back, uh, just trying to rub it in. And just as I got to my room, I realized that I left my wallet in the golf bag, which was about a kilometer walk. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I, had to, I had to walk back. It's tail and, between and your legs. stinking hot, like, in the middle of the day. <sighs> yeah. And then get my golf, or get my wallet, and then walk all the way back. Yeah. And then I had to get something out of Simon's room, and I was just... And I looked at myself in the mirror. Usually, I get I get titty dragons. I get a, I get a smiley face. Oh, do you? Yeah. On my tummy, I kind of get a line, and yeah, then around that. my chest, I get a get kind, of, kind of... So, titty yeah. dragons. Okay. So, you know what dragons are, sweat patches. Yes. So, I get the dragons along there, like, straight off the tits. And then, but I, I don't usually get the old like uh, mash dragons. Right. The mash dragons are the ones that come straight off the neck, and they give you like the V line. So like, you were full on. I had the I had the mash dragons, the teddy dragons, and I was I would never see myself sweatier. Wow. And, was, and I can't imagine playing rugby. Effing rugby in that. It's just mm. outrageous, outrageous. But the Fijians can do it because that's you know. That's where they're from. This is true. Home advantage. It is home advantage. And 100%. And them playing, you know, on a late May and a, and a Friday night in Christchurch when it's freaking yeah, like eight that was, degrees. That was the opposite effect, wasn't that's, it? They're like... Yeah, exactly. They're just frozen to the bone. <laughs> they're like, how do people play? <laughs> how do people play in these conditions? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Oh, dear, eh? But no, it was a good trip. Tony's sweaty tits. That's what you tuned in for. <laughs> Should that be the thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> My sweaty tits. But yes, there was a lot of rugby. And where would you? We, we have to talk about it. I'm wearing Italian gear, so I want to start with Italy's win over Scotland. Because this is two cents gets distracted. A rugby podcast. A rugby podcast. You want to start? That's not, that's not on there. There's no rugby podcast. You know what there. irritates me? Uh, out of the three games of Super, of, of uh, Six, Six Nations, Nations that was week, the one you were the greatest, spoiled to. That's the one that was spoiled to. Uh, as I was watching, because it was on at bloody shit knows when. Yeah, it was on at three fifteen in the morning here. Yeah. So I woke. I didn't wake up and watch the Ireland game live. I woke up and watched it delayed and just yeah. avoided social media. Mm -hmm. But um, that Irish commentator that I really like uh, said, "Ah, oh, the historic occasion." Where a scheduling got up, could we be seeing something else historic happening here? Um, and was that a good impression of that guy? That's kind of Belfast, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where he's from. Hmm. Um, uh, and then I was like, "What the Italy one?" And yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" Commentators don't do that. For God's yeah. sake, don't do that. We can't. Well, especially us on the other side of the board. Even if you're like been at work and you're coming home, you're like, yeah. "Well, that game's on live. I'll catch yeah. that." Then I watch the other one afterwards. Yeah, there are people who even tell me like your thumbnails have got spoilers in them because it's showing the winning guy. So nowadays, I make the thumbnail before the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unless the player like literally doesn't do anything, goes off within two minutes, I don't change it. Like that's the guy, yeah. win or lose or draw. That's the guy. So yeah. I'm not spoiling it on purpose. Like you just don't do that. But in Super Rugby, the last game of the week was the Chiefs and Reds game. Yeah. And that game was also an upset. And when the Reds were in the in the lead, because there were quite a few upsets this week with Super Rugby, yeah. the commentator alluded to it, but didn't speak specifically to any results. Nice. nice. That's the way to do it. Show like a bit a of class, class man. Yeah, pro. Don't just, yeah, if you got dead air to kill, don't spoil the results for everyone else. I didn't watch any rugby content at all while I was in Fiji, but I did catch you having a big old bitch about the commentators. <laughs> <laughs> 
I loved it, actually. Yeah, it's And so... I was sitting there going, well, to be fair, they've got a point, you know, like, yeah, rugby is a lot better and the scrums really do suck. No, I'm kidding. But, it was, uh... I was just annoyed. <laughs> it's been coming okay, for no, a while. We'll go back to it. I just wanted to, like, shove that in there just as a little, like, okay. red herring. To... I do want to get your take on that okay. later. Like, okay. just wind you up. <laughs> okay. Italy, Scotland. Italy, Scotland. 31-29. Wow. And what's so impressive about this weekend was there were so many points in so many of these games you thought, well, that's done. Well, that's and, the thing. 22-10. Yeah. I spoke to the guy who runs the rugby forecast algorithm at the start of the week. Mm -hmm. And we had a look at all the algorithm stuff. And it was like, this is a clean sweep away wins week. Yeah. We've only ever seen it a couple of times in the Six Nations, but we're going to get another one. You know, Ireland are all conquering. They're going to go into Twickenham. You know, Scotland's going to get a bonus point against Italy and France yeah, yeah, are yeah, going to yeah. probably beat Wales. Like, it's going to be a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit dull. Yeah, right. And then what? It was it turned on its head. Yeah. Yeah. It Which was, is what you like to see. Yeah, it was great. It was really, really great. Uh, and there was just, you know, Brex, that guy, he looks pretty damn Not your Brex. He, he looks class, doesn't mm -hmm. he? And they were, they stuck in it in that first half. They got a few penalties mm. and whatnot. They never got out of touch. Why does the ball keep falling off the freaking tee for Garbisi, I man? I, I didn't see that. It, it happened like, right I at know, the start of the game when he was lining up a first. Remember at the end of the France game, yeah, it falls off the tee. It happens literally well, they, his I first didn't, catch. I, I didn't catch it because I only watched the highlights, highlights of right. this game. Okay. But, yeah. yeah, well, it happened again. And this time he kicked the kick and he had a huge smile on his face like it was hilarious. All right, all right. Who were the uh, main standouts? Um, well, you mentioned Bricks. He he's, had a pretty good game. He's a monster. Yeah, no, he was really good. Scored a try. Um, Menoncello, the other midfielder, did really Menoncello. well. Lewis Liner got his test debut and he managed I to get a try. Score a he, nice had, try. he had virtually no touches in the first half. It was almost like he wasn't there. And yeah. then, yeah, I think his second touch is a try. You, you know, I kind of credited him the try to the halfback as well, which he had, oh, no, yeah. he had nothing to do with it. But he was caught yelling for the ball so loudly and so Australian-like um, and just making a scene of himself that the players were actually drifting off, drifting off. And mm. then that left the hole for, mm. um, what's the name of the halfback? Uh, at that time, was it Vani? I think. Yeah, to take the gap yeah. and score the try. So he he played he played pretty nicely. Yeah. What he smirking? He sounds he sounds Australian. He doesn't sound Australian. He sounds totally British though. When you oh, English, really? when you hear his, him, that's what because he's been bit, raised there. Yeah, he was right. called up into the England camp last year, but he never got yeah, a game. Right. I didn't realize his mum is Italian. I knew he was born in Italy. I assumed he was eligible through birthplace, but he's actually got an Italian mum. Right, so he could have nice. played for Australia, England, or Italy. Right. Gets in there with the Italian. But yeah, the captain, Lamaro, he's crazy good. Ross Vincent, like, yeah, there was heaps of them just doing yeah, really Brony, well. how did he play? Uh, yeah, he was good. I put yeah. him on my team of the week. Oh, he was wow. he was just everywhere. Like, there was one time when they got, like, a big line break, and then he's the first Johnny on the spot, just so that the guy who gets the initial break doesn't get isolated and turned over. Like, that kind of stuff, which you don't really... It's not sexy. No. It's not going to be in the highlights package, but he's just always there. I love that. But it's massively official. Yeah, yeah you need in that. In terms of the Scottish, who did you think, like, shat the bed? Oh. I, like I don't think the midfield quite looked the same with Tui Pilotu out injured. I mean, Redpath's a good player, but yeah, didn't, didn't quite look. It's just that they don't have, he doesn't have the same partnership with um, with Hugh Jones because Tui Pilotu and Jones play together at their club. Yeah, so right. that kind of like Stifled telepathy, yeah, attack. doesn't quite have the same. How were they it. But it's another, it's another time when Scotland is just kind of fallen off the game. Like, remember they did it against Wales in the first game where they had a big lead, that's right. unassailable, and then they almost lost. Like yeah, This is right. quite concerning, the, the fact that Scotland just keep... For, I mean, up until this game, I think in the final 20 minutes, they'd only scored three points across the first three games. It's an mm. hour of rugby only scoring three points, and they conceded a ton. Mm. So it's just worrying because they've not had a massive overhaul of the squad. They've got the same coach... They should be the second place team in the Six Nations. Mm. Well, they were unlucky against France, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They right. were lucky against Wales. They did show a little bit of quality in that Wales game in the last you know, seven minutes, I think, mm -hmm. where they managed just to start playing a bit of territory, right. get them involved in the game that they wanted to play, stop that frenetic attack that Wales was doing at the time. Mm. But they, sh you're right, they should have more composure with, yeah. the, with the team that's had a little bit, little bit more time under um, in the saddle mm. together. How was Finn? Was he... 
like his mercurial best at any time? I don't think it was his best game. Yeah, but I mean, it's easier to say that when, like, when he was playing England, he looked world class, didn't he? Like, yeah, well, you know. they, they've got to remember there's more f- games than just the Calcutta Cup. Yeah, game. that's it. Eh? Like that, by far and away, looked their best, and they looked great in the first half against, um, and in, in the very beginning of the second half against mm. um, uh, Wales. Mm. What happened to our man Van der Vuva? Van der Vuva? Didn't get himself on the board. He still chalked up a few run meters, but there's a couple of times when he got tackled by Kapo Watso, and Kapo Watso is like a much smaller dude. He's, he's smaller than you both you and I. would have thought, like, he's just getting away and flattening him, but I mean... Bowel even if, movement's bigger than him. Yeah, like, there's one, I think, liner. <laughs> God, Sorry. that's one of those ones where I almost was able to just not go there, <laughs> but I still went there. Um, yeah, like, Kapo Watso gets him enough that liner can push him into touch, like, yeah... Yeah, right. Just heart from the Italians. I mean, they still only live on like 40 odd percent position. They yeah. always go into each game knowing we are going to have to tackle a lot more than the opponents. Mm. And we are going to have to be clinical when we do get those chances. And they, they were. I so you, um, You're a bit of a gamer. Aren't you? you like to play. Not that much games. these days, but I, I do. do you a know, wee bit. Like when there's like you'd get to a boss in whatever mm. game you're playing and you're like, you'd have this thing where you're like, I have to play the best I've ever played to have any chance to make zero mistakes to it's beat like this thing. It's like Dark Souls. You play Dark yeah, Souls? Yeah, and it just makes you want to shoot yourself in the face. Yeah. Because you get past it and then you just like fall off a cliff and go back three hours. Um, but anyway, uh, so you, 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 but you get, but you know, like a, apart from Dark Souls, actually, that's not a good example. But in most cases, you know, you die and you get another chance. Right. You die and you get another chance. You just keep on. I mean, riding even in Dark Souls, you get another chance. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, but you go back <laughs> so far, you know. But then they like they have to get everything completely a hundred percent right, play to their absolute maximum potential, yeah. and hope the other team has a slightly off day. Yeah. That might be that's a little bit derogatory towards them. But I they, think over the course of recent years, that's pretty fair. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. Italy can cause a threat if somebody else is not quite Imagine there and they have their... Scotland and France on their... Um, uh, like, if they pip them this year. Mm. They, they were un- desperately unlucky not to beat France. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's encouraging. It is encouraging. Well, I, I think in the last pod, I gave them an absolute serve. So sorry to all my Italian friends. I, all is forgiven. Uh, no, well, I still think they would need to. They need to produce a little bit more. But Consistency that's, that's, is key, eh? At least one or two victories. Who have they got next week? They've got Wales, Ooh, which is baby. very tasty. Winless Wales. Winless Wales. Who's? So I think this is the first time in history. I didn't check this, but somebody mentioned it that Italy's gone two games in the Six Nations, like back to back, without losing because a draw and a win. Yeah. So right. like every other Six Nations, if they've got a win or a draw, the next game has been a loss. <laughs> so well done, Italy. Victories. Um, no, that's that's interesting. So Wales is odds on to lose the. Well, they're at home to Italy, so I think they'll still go in as favourites. But, but if they win, what are they? Where do they actually finish on the table? Wales are on three points. Italy are on seven points. So oh. there's still potential that Wales could win. Um, with a bonus and point. then if, if Italy were to get like a losing bonus point, then potentially they could still pip the Welsh. Poor old Wales. Mm. I, don't, you, I don't think Gats is very happy. Well, you wouldn't be. You haven't got a win got yet. None from four. None from four. Jeez Louise. Um, Before we get to Wales, should we go England-Ireland? What a game. What a great game to watch. Yes. So impressed. So impressed with it. England was England so team. written off with that one. Yeah, I, look, I, I... I didn't think England were going to win. I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think it was going to be a blowout, but I certainly didn't think England were going to win. I, I heard that, like, I wasn't... Like, I was in Fiji, and that's about the furthest place away you can be from, like, the English press. Mm-hmm. So, but apparently, I heard murmuring some English press saying worst ever England team. Yeah, they're really time. laying into them. The only chance they're going to have to win this is if they play 13 or 14 players. That was Jamie Heaslip, yeah. one of the Irish pundits who said oh, that. Yeah, good one. Man, the Irish pundits get themselves in the... In the yeah, glory. I think most of the fans, because I did the preview, most of the fans were like, hey, 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 we're going to Twicken them. This ain't, like, this is not a doddle. They we are not, like, buying up. into this. But the pundits are just like, yeah, we're going to yeah, smash these bricks. Who was that idiot on Off the Ball who managed to, like, make sure that Sam Kane put the best performance oh, yeah, he yeah, ever yeah. put in an All Black jersey? Yeah. <laughs> so you're simply not the quality of an international footballer or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. Some of the pundits. I mean, that's not unique to the Irish press. The New Zealand press can be really the bad Irish, with that yeah, as well. No, but the Irish ones really seem to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right before these big clutch kind yeah, of games. Just shut up. Just be quiet. Like, because Andy Farrell yeah. has never bought into that. Like, they've always been sending out the messages about how you know it's a massive game it's a big challenge not gonna take it lightly most of the fans have been echoing that sentiment but then there's just a few pundits who just like what was, before we get in the game there was a little bit of a, a back and forth uh tutate shouty 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 pants um <laughs> Between... i hate your dad you hate my dad oh don't be mean to me you're yeah. an asshole um yelling at each other across the between farrell and borthwick yes what was the story there well, apparently they're just they're having a wee catch-up Talking about organising a couple of barbecues. Because they used to be teammates, so, yeah. Organizing yeah. A hey, Bean, how's the missus? She's all right. Come around for a barbecue. <laughs> you f***ing come around for a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I have to F-bomb that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so we don't know what the... Oh, I mean, I think there's a bit of talk that there might have been an incident that one of them thought was kind of foul play and the other one was disagreeing, but... Oh. Yeah. Pull your head in, sort of thing. Yeah, it's a bit of a. Yeah, all right. That's a, a bit of emotion. S- storm in a teeth. Well, not even that. Like, that's all right. It's not bad to see that. But yeah, it wasn't like they took swings at each other or anything like that. No, that's right. But no, there was a lot of drama in that game. What a game, and what a player May is. Like he is Earl. Sorry. I was thinking, uh, geez, who's May? Johnny May? Yeah, he didn't yeah, play. He retired. Earl, sorry, I always ben call Earl, him May. Yeah. I always call him Ben May for some reason. He's been in phenomenal form he, since the World Cup. I he, really want to run his stats because I talked to one of the Planet Rugby journos a couple of weeks ago, and he said, like, he's English. Yeah. So he was big enough. He talked a lot about England. That's you know, yeah. that's his team. And he said something like, you know, Ben Earl's been world class. He's right up there with like Aldrete and Savia right now. Yeah. And in the comments, people were just like, F bomb this, but get f- like you, <laughs> you are full of it. Like, that's he's, the no, <laughs> he's nowhere near that, blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, like, well, he's close if he's not there. Like, he's been incredible. And then he just did it again. Well, that was what my comment was <clears> going to be. Like, I know we, we, we hold, you know, Savia and some of these players in, in very, very high stead. Mm. Um, but he looked every inch world, world class. Yeah. Like, up, really up there. Yeah. Like, and he's been doing it week after week. And, like, it's just, He made Bundy Aki look pretty average for that trial he yeah. just got rid of him like Bundy Aki is a great defensive 12 and he's a, just a meat <clears throat> it's just like it looks like a you know how you look at a pit bull and they've just you've got <laughs> tenuous muscles everywhere yeah. he's just like that and he's yeah. a white freaking mass of meat coming at you he's got a turn of pace yeah he's a savage at the breakdown yeah like he is jeez I'd like to have him on a team that I was supporting yeah like Really, really good. Looks and doesn't like a great team man. It's weird because traditionally he's everything. not been a he's not been traditionally a number eight, but he's made that jersey his own. And yeah, you're right. People used to give him a lot of stick for like celebrating everything. Oh, I like, like it. Team gets a free kick at scrum time, and he's acting like he just won the yeah. World Cup. <laughs> yeah, people give him a lot of stick, but man, when you're winning, yeah, and exactly. when you're getting man of the match, and when your your team needs that, sometimes you need a bloke like to that. pump them up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no. Sometimes that can be a guy who doesn't do a heck of a lot, but other than just cheer on. But he was so good. Yeah, best player of the weekend for my mind. Oh, for sure. Yeah, easily. Yeah, but yeah. he's been doing it week after week, man. Just like every involvement he had, like he was doing good, good, yeah. good things. Yeah. Like, very, very, very tight. He's giving you Kalen Doris. Uh, he was giving me up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, Kalen Doris was pretty good as well, but yeah, still, yeah. being ill was the star of the show. Yeah, he absolutely was. And in, in a game where <coughs> Ford wasn't kicking well. No, it you was know, really like, weird. England were going to win a yeah, game yeah, yeah, where thought, they like, were behind yeah. when they had this many kicks of goal, but they missed this many. Yeah, like, that's right. You would have thought, like, if England is going to win, they're going to go into it. Like, gonna Ford go is going to do what he did to Argentina. He's just going to drop goal the shit out of it. You know, he's going to kick his he penalties. He took an awful drop at one station. Yeah. Yeah. Missed a couple of penalties. Like, mm. yeah, it wasn't his finest hour. I really like the, ex- like, there's a, I want to get to Ireland in a bit, but I love the expansive kind of play that uh, that England were playing mm. with. And the thing that impressed me most was there were so many points in that game where they were on top, but um, what good teams do, they managed to just keep creeping and getting points. Mm. And Ireland managed to get in the lead, and there were so many times where yeah. I thought, oh, that's going to break them. That's yeah. going to that, defeat yeah. them. They, they, 
to have that much dominance, but to still, still be behind. When James Lowe got that second try, you were like, Ireland aren't even playing that well. Yeah, they're, they're still going to win. Yeah, so, and you were like, geez, how good are these guys that be able to do that? You're like kind of in awe of That's the a thing. team like, playing the, the, badly. The greatest teams are the ones that can play pretty bang average and still walk away with a win. That's what Ireland looked like they were going to do. But in, when I was watching it, I thought, they've taken their souls. There's no way that they're, they're going to, they're just going to like go wall as me and, and crawl into their shell right now. A little yeah. bit of like Wales did at the end of the France right. game. And but they just kept on fighting, Coming back, yeah. kept on gritting, and a lot of it was on the back of Earl. I thought Furbank had made a couple of mistakes, but yeah. looked really, really looked sharp, looked eh? great. There was I love that first try where Low did for his standard a relatively a ropey poor kick, kick, yeah. Went to Low and he like freaking gunned it out to the left hand side. Had a line up. Was he went to inside to Robinson? Like and Robinson, I don't know who's, who's Robinson. Ollie, someone. Ollie. Oh, Ollie Lawrence. Jeez. Oh, there you go. Robinson Lawrence. They both uh, have yeah, they have names. A's in them. <laughs> they both have vowels. <laughs> but he did one of my favourite things to see on a rugby field, and I don't know who he did it to. He did just the bump off sit down. Like Jonah Lomu was mm-hmm. like the best ever, which is just meet on meat contact. Yeah. And uh-uh. <laughs> and just sit down. Yeah. Not even a fan, just yeah. like boom. Your my your mass can't handle <laughs> my mass. And that's where you belong on yeah, your ass, you little yeah. bitch. You know, no, Lawrence was way because he played the last game and he looked quiet. And it was like, what's he doing? That like, Ollie Lawrence is a proper wrecking ball. Where yeah. is he? But this was kind of more back to the Ollie Lawrence that we're used but to seeing. Just the f- intent that Furback had to like go, no, we're going to gun it. I've got numbers <laughs> on the left. Yeah. Created an overlap out of nothing. Mm. Like, and a bit of magic, for, you know, the bump off sit down, bitch. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Like, I like Ireland. I'm of Irish descent, but I was just sort of like, we are neutral. The underdog thing, eh? You're just like, oh, when they've been so God, written off, yeah, you're just like, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. So I, I wasn't upset when they got that victory at yeah. the end. I was like, oh, yeah. wow, that's, that's, that's well deserved. Ireland weren't helped by the fact that they lost both of their backs. You know, they only had a 6 2 split, so the two backs. I mean, they lost Kelvin Nash really early, so that meant that. Kieran Frawley had to go into fullback, and then Hugo Keenan, who's a great fullback, goes onto the wing. Like he's all right on the wing. He's yeah, a former sevens dude, ideal. but it's not the same. He's way better at fullback than was, he is on the wing. It was almost like a, a mini uh, version of what happened. You see the, the Blues game. The it, blues. Was, it was the same thing as the, the Blues. Blues were just. <laughs> it was exactly. Blues was also a, went for a six-two split and had both their backs go a, off even earlier. It was a walking. Yeah, it walking was awful. Wounded. Out <laughs> it was there. terrible. <laughs> Yeah. It was a whole game plan. The yeah, game was like, just where's Talia? Just, yeah, just give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> he just drove him into the ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that didn't help the Irish cause, I think. But yeah, like you say, just a few things. Like James Lowe didn't seem to be connecting with the boot as well as he usually does. No. Like Josh van der Fleer, I thought at times, was keeping them in the game. Turnovers and just slowing the ball down. So that's random. That's oh. not Josh van der Fleer. No, Johannesburg's finest. We're going to um, stop I'm making that joke. Some, I'm just for, so looking for something to open a bottle. Okay. Sorry, man. I would give you the pen, but I bought it from Timu. I don't think it'll handle it. Should we give it a crack? <laughs> you give it a crack, all right. All right, this is going to be Timu's quality. Oh, no, you can't. We can't bag it because they were a sponsor once. They were a sponsor once. I'm probably contractually obligated to not talk. Well, no, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to show you. Well, I think most pens aren't going to hold up. No, no this. pen is designed to open a bottle. Let's see how they go. Well, pass me that lighter over there in a sec. But let's let's just go through the Timo experiment first. You feel that? How, is that cold enough for you? Yep. Okay. Just getting that check, a little temperature check from the fella over here. All right. So this is a um, test two. Rather aptly named for this. It was like a test. dollar for like twelve pens you're or something. Ch- you're a cheapo. Are you? Getting I had a team who ordered for something else, and I was like a dollar short of like the the required total, so I bought pens. How does this one write? Not that well. It's not a ballpoint pen. Oh, yeah, writes writes like like a real dog. <laughs> well, you got to use it properly. Hold on. How <laughs> do? <laughs> <laughs> For you guys listening and watching at home, what do you think Tony just drew on my notes? Do you think he drew a smiley face? Do you think he drew a rugby ball? Or do you think he drew a cock and balls? Ah, yes. 
<laughs> we'll reveal the, com- the answer at the end. Put in the comments <laughs> below. Next week, we'll reveal <laughs> the answer. Don't send cotton <laughs> balls and just put C and B in the <laughs> comments below or else it'll get blocked. Yeah. Oh, 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 you broke it. Well, hold on. Look, it's not still... Okay. Not right there, we'll give it another shot. We've, okay. we've lost the tip of the t- <laughs> test two, and this the uh, Timu pen test challenge. And the pen's uh, busted. Uh, just there you busted. go. There we go. That'll, that'll be easier. What lighters were designed to do? There we go. There we go. Nice. What were we talking about? Right. Josh Van der Flair. That's right. He was the, good. Uh, the guy from Joburg. Yeah. The hey. Irish don't like that joke. There are just it's a joke. Yeah. I think it's the same way I get a bit I get a bit uh sensitive when people talk about us poaching all the Pacific talent and I'm like half these that's guys are from a, South that's Auckland. That's not a joke. Right. That's just people go, Oh, you've been pillaging them for years. That's that, that, that's that genuine point about why the All Blacks aren't as good as what they're made out to be. Right. And then you go, well, how many of the Samoan and Tongan team were born in New Zealand? Like Most of them. 90% of them. <clears throat> oh, jeez. I kind of... <laughs> I've almost prematurely frothed here. I feel like... This is a, um, Mark, this doesn't usually happen. What would you think about the Smith drop goal? Oh, classy. Uh, it was really nice. It was... Because um, a man with a lot of flair and stuff, like... Could have thought we'll take a dagger here again. Oh, they had got, advantage. I've got the ball in hand. Yeah, actually, yeah. For the, I've got, we've got a free shot here. I'll yeah. It. But it was... It was they, the play. They were stretched. Yeah. He had time and space to do it. Right in front. Yeah. Why not? Donk it over, win the exactly. game. Exactly, yeah. Really good. Really good rugby IQ. And he was on pretty late in the piece, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. But George Ford did not have his greatest game. Like, they missed so many, so many points. Mm. They really, really did. Yeah. What do you think? I, I thought the discipline of the Irish wasn't great throughout the game. Uh, their line-out was just... A bit ropey, eh? Really, really ropey. Probably the worst performance <laughs> I've seen from Ireland in the last two years. Yeah, um, well, it's weird because like up until was, this point in the Six Nations, they've been kind of cruising and they've still been easily better than everybody else. And they actually got put out to the test this time. And Yeah, and they didn't find that extra gear. It was surprising. Next week? Scotland, Scotland. Scotland. At home. And Scotland will be smarting. Mm. So Scotland have still got a chance to win the triple crown because the two teams they've lost to, well, they've lost, they, no, they lost to France and yeah, France and Italy. That's how that works. Right. Yeah. Triple crown's the other four. But they got the oh, they'll be good. They'll be. Yeah, they'll I think that'll be the first time they've won it in years. But they've not beaten the Irish in Dublin for how, donkeys. How years. much is it stinging that the fact they're not going to get um, not only the triple crown but the grand slam? The grand slam for Ireland. Oh, it's got. I mean. People were talking about it like it was a shoe in. So yeah, that's and right. they were going to be the first team to do back to back Grand Slams. Never been done. Isn't that amazing? I heard like correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if I heard this correctly. But nobody's won back to back Six Nations. No, they've won back to back Six Nations, just not Slams. I thought. All right, I know back to back Five Nations were done, but has anyone in the in the Six Nations era gone back to back? Pretty sure. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Comment Tell below. us now in the comments. It's just under you. Under your CMB. Under your CMB. Yeah, it might be a smart. Might be fate. something else. Yeah, it could well be. You never know. Could have done a sneaky veg. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't one of the options. Sneaky. Should we start a band and call ourselves Sneaky Vag? No. Next up, Sneaky Vag with supporting act Cock and Balls. Throw them together. Wales for us. <laughs> that was on this morning. Monday morning here in NZ, four o'clock. Yes. You got up to watch it? Of course I did. Um, Monday morning, work day. Nothing more that I want to do before I drop my daughter at school is wake up. and It's a depressing watch, really, like having to wake up and just knowing that... You know how you have your pending Monday morning doom? Mm-hmm. Most people do. I don't really have that because I don't really worry too much. But You're a carefree kind of guy. Well, I still have to do things on Monday morning. I have yes. to like be at meetings and but you don't let it get you down no i just keep on tracking exactly yeah but i don't want to bloody watch rugby on monday morning when i'm trying to get ready for shit right basically but uh uh the game itself very good game very good game yeah very good we were treated yeah as um, i mentioned with a lot of good rugby very good first half of rugby and Wales were, were playing, ahead for more than half of the game. And they are playing very, very well. Mm-hmm. And I, I like the look of a lot of those. Dyer played particularly mm-hmm. well. That try that he just got off a little bit of scrappy Thing ball. Thing of beauty. 
heads up play. Yeah, exactly. Just, Adam Baird just kind of tossed it there yeah. and he was like, nobody's in front of me. Yeah. I'm fast. Yeah, I can make this work. <laughs> exactly. I have the... What do you think of the French halfback, Nolan Ligarec? That spinning back <laughs> pass. <laughs> the dude's just, in his first ever test start. Loved it. And he's just loved like, it. I don't care. He's, and Strawn used to do a lot of those. Um, but dad doesn't like Ant Strawn. Oh, your dad can go. Because Ant Strawn's one of my faves. Really? Me and Gazza. Boy, what's he got to get Ant Strawn? I think the reason my dad doesn't like Ant Strawn is because at a club rugby game once, my dad went over and talked to, I want to say, Irini Ie, who was coaching one of the club teams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ant Strawn came over and told him to F off and oh. leave him alone, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound very nice. I just thought it was a rugby player. Okay. That doesn't sound... And Strong, you shouldn't have said that. Yeah. And now I wish I didn't know that. You Sorry. Know? Yeah. I told him to ever. <laughs> All right. It may not have been that direct, but he told him to get, take a hike, basically. Yeah, yeah. I would love to have seen the wider situation. How this all... is coming from Gaza. Yeah, 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 yeah. He may have been genuinely just talking as, you know. Yeah. Well, who knows what our fathers do. I know my father wouldn't be doing that, though. He's dead. He would struggle to talk to our Rennie IE right now. Although if it was... 20 years ago? He could have. He would have been alive then. Yeah. Easier yeah. to talk when you're alive. I've noticed this. Unless you're into... Um, Ouija boards and stuff. Ouija boards and seances and all that sort mm -hmm. of jazz. Have you ever done a seance in your time? So France <laughs> came back. Those last 15 minutes, it got pretty brutal. High, I was a high, high quality game of mm. footy. For long periods of time, that first half was like um, punching, punching counter punch. And it yeah, was... I think I counted. I think there was literally five lead changes in the first half. Wow. I thought... Some um, games you go through and you don't get one. I didn't mind Ramos at 10. Like, yeah, he was actually all right. Yeah, I was yeah. a little bit hesitant because he's like a fill-in... But I thought he played Ten, pretty but well. But he played pretty well. I thought that him and Pino were like, what sod is yeah. losing crap. Yeah, we, uh, Pino was... He, he really got the bit between mm -hmm. the two, especially early on, just trying to get a bit of, get a bit of go for a ball and saying, like, I've had enough of this. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the world's best rugby players. Like, yeah. I'm meant to be in one of the world's best rugby teams. Let's start playing like mm. it. And he, he looked pretty good. He looked the business, eh? Good. The forwards stood up across the across the Big board. pack, eh? Giants. Yeah. Giants. They looked at the pack weight difference. It was stupidly high. It was like a whole players were almost. Well, like, it, was it was like a back's difference. Yeah, anyway, it was a 70 difference. kilo difference. Yeah. Which... Uh, like across, you know, 570, what is it? What, that's a fair you? bit of weight anyway. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's like a like a 15-year-old athletic boy just yeah. pushing like crazy. That's the thing. Like they were, uh, the Welsh guys said after the game, they were kind of expecting the big French pack to tire. But yeah. if anything, where they got all their points was at the end. That's when they really blitzed them. They scored yeah, a bunch of sure late did. tries. So sure Luku but got one and Telfafuna got the charge down. Wales were playing a bit too much rugby in their own half when they went behind. Well, there was, it was one, like, well, there's heaps of time on the clock. You don't need to be trying to win it now. There was one moment that I just thought, oh, they're, they're gone. They're mentally gone. Where they had, um, they were, it was 24, 30 or whatever at that stage. And they were on their own 40 meter line. And they had maybe about seven players that had a mix of backs and forwards out to the right. And what's the guy's number 15, Winlet or whatever his name? Winlet. Win yeah. He didn't he, win it. He didn't. And they, he were getting, it. they were getting marked by a very passive three defenders. So it was mm. maybe like a seven on three. Mm. So all that needed to happen was like through the hands mm. and you're going to have a massive... Draw and pass like, kind of draw thing. Draw and pass, basic yep. rugby. And when it was, was like... And they, were, they weren't advancing on them because they knew that they were woefully outnumbered. But he just throws this wild miracle wide pass, which was easily able to be observed by the French defenders. Caught by I can't remember who the player was. Mm. Who got it was basically a hospital pass. Who got drilled into the mm. touchline. Like if you watch that area back, they should, if they just went through the hands, mm. then they could have made something happen. But just no rugby IQ in the moment, no composure. Bit of panic, maybe. Just panic and mm. just trying to do the miracle play, and it was. The worst thing they could have possibly done at that moment. It is a very young Welsh side. I think they are only older than the Italians who are crazy, crazy yeah. young as well. So, <laughs> What is crazy young? We've got a bunch of three-year-olds out there. Basically. <laughs> Straight out of daycare. Yeah. They were still wearing nappy, some exactly. of these kids. Um, yeah. Well, it was it was unfortunate because I thought I, I liked the, what a lot of those players are doing. I liked the look at Costello. I thought he looked. Yeah, I think that good. was one of his better games in yeah. a Welsh shirt for sure. He was looking good. I thought the um, um, 
Tommy Revel or Revel or tell me tell me. He I continues don't. to be phenomenal. Doesn't he looks he? good. He took a knock to his knee, which was unfortunate. So how are they going to go with Wainwright, Tommy Turnover, and uh, Mark Morgan when he comes back? And there's there's another Jack one. Morgan. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I'm not fucking playing. <laughs> Excuse my Stop language. Swearing. I'm, I, you might miss that one. Um, yeah, I'm too old for that. <laughs> and maybe not quite good enough. <laughs> Just quietly. Maybe. Who knows? You never got your chance of Wales. No, I don't think I'm Welsh qualified, sadly, despite the surname. No, how many generations? It's a few. Yeah, it's a few. All right, fair enough. Where's your mum from? Uh, I think her lineage is all England. Oh, yeah. No wonder you're a prick. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I did one of those DNA tests years ago, and it was basically the UK and Ireland. All right, so So I got a bit of all us. All us Kiwis are kind of a mixed bag. Oh no, I had uh, I had seventy five percent, seventy five percent Irish. Okay, I was nowhere near the kind of Munster area as well. Right. Um, Of Cork, whatnot, and then I had seventeen percent Scottish. Mm. And what's left after that? Were you like Iberian? No, and then I had like I had four percent. uh, Northern European. Oh yeah, the old uh, Nordic countries. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah. Mm. It was said. It was said, English and Northern European. Okay. So I always get these emails telling me I have a, a DNA match to explore. Oh wow! From ancestry. Dot com. Dot com. Finding some cousins. Did yeah, some, it right now? sometimes it's literally my cousins. It'll be like, yeah, oh, I've done that. Philip Kane, and I'm like, oh, that's my mum's, that's my mum's brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's my uncle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I should have used the word uncle. Yeah. <laughs> that's how that works. That is how that works, mate. But yeah. But yeah. Okay, but what were your thoughts on uh, uh, um, France, Wales? Any hope for Wales going forward? I bet you're gonna put a positive spin on it. Okay, I want you to go. I want you to go hard neg. Neg it hard on this one. Neg on them hard. I can't, man. Neg on them. No, they're, they're just and really just role young. Play. We're role play. No, I refuse. They're an international rugby team. Coached by... The- Warren Gatland has basically sold the present to pay for the future. He's saying, I don't care if we lose now. I mean, he cares, but one of the journalists actually asked them. In the post match, like Warren's already pretty pissed off. Yeah, and they asked him. So for next week's game against Italy, are you going to pick a team to try to win, or <laughs> like what is he supposed to say? <laughs> no, I'm going to pick a team which I've, I think is going to lose. I hope we, I hope we have a courageous loss. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't rate. I like. I think they had their. I've gone about on about this before. There's no point going on about it again. But they had the Gatlin period. Mm. It's over. It's done. They needed to. They needed freshness. So, it? does this? Do these results to you indicate that maybe the problem wasn't Wayne Pivak, or does it just say that Gats is picking a young side and they're going to take a while to get better? Column A and Column B. Mm. Like, I think there isn't. I think there's talent there. Mm. They probably do need a wee bit of time to mature, mm. but the fact that they had this wild culling of the mm. senior talent all at once, that was. You know, like, so you think maybe Wales, like when that team made the semi-finals in 2019, had been overperforming as kind of the end of a generation, and then the current generation is just not quite up to that level because they had a bunch of guys who were just at that level. Like I think I remember like there was a Wales under 20 side or something which had like Win Jones and yeah. um, you know Tipperick and like a bunch of these guys who all came through at pretty like George North and stuff all yeah. came through at the same time. But that kind of golden Half generation Penny, feel. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They all came through at around about the same time. So maybe you just don't get that all the time. Maybe you don't. And that sucks. Mm. Um, it happens every time. I remember for a while it was like, the All Blacks would be great, but we just don't have a good, what is it, like halfback. And then we had like freaking Aaron Smith and TJ and all these guys at the well, same time. And We still, we talked about like, yeah, like how bad the All Blacks were over the current period. They had a better winning record than like... A lot of teams. Most teams other than France and Ireland. Yeah, basically. I think we had, a bidding, we had a better winning record than South Africa. I think we did, yeah. Yeah, so they just don't win enough. Like, mm. it's hard to, like, just support a team that just constantly loses. Mm. You know? Like, 
And there's two years of constant losses. Mm. They got a little murmuring of excitement when they managed to sneak through to the quarters mm. um, and then lost to a relatively underwhelming Argentina, Argentina side. Yeah, Cup. exactly. France, do you think uh, they're over their hangover from the World Cup? Or? It's an interesting one because France's side at the weekend, they had a lot of enforced changes. Like they had Dante suspended and they had a couple of other guys injured. So maybe that was kind of good. Yeah. Maybe if, if Gaultier had kind of kept things the way they were, that, that malaise from the kind of World Cup would have continued. Maybe having a bit of fresh blood helped them out. Yeah, that's right. Because they had a couple of debutants in the starting side and a guy come off the bench for um, his debut. So. Oh, I can't remember his name. Very famous. What's it, number 13? Uh, Fiku. Fiku. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. He played great. Yeah, he, he always was, plays great. Yeah, well, he... he at, even for him, I thought he was particularly standing in that game. So next week is the Super Sunday, which I think means three Monday morning games for us in New Zealand. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's it's Wales, Italy, which is the battle what for the spoon. What are we going to talk about? How am I supposed to watch those games? <laughs> Don't go to work. <laughs> Call in sick. This is on the internet. It's boss. He doesn't watch. Um... <laughs> Exactly, call it sick. <laughs> oh god. Wales, Italy, battle for the spoon. Yeah. All super <laughs> could be super Friday night. Like super I don't think it's super Saturday. There were no Friday no. night games. Yeah, no, they've only had one Friday night game. Give me, me some Friday night games. Is it super Saturday sacks. or Super Sunday? Super Saturday, come on. You sacks of crap. If no one wants to oh. Oh, maybe it is Super Saturday. Yes. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning for us. Yeah, 3.15. Okay. That works for New Zealand. Because otherwise you're going to be... Yeah, just, yeah, you're right. Okay, Super was, Saturday. It's very weird when I haven't watched the game and I've got to talk about it. It's very... Like, it's tricky. Like, I watched the other... I once in a job interview got asked... I didn't even want to go to this job interview. Yes. My old boss tried to get me... He tried to poach me from our former employer... He was like, come have an interview. I didn't want wanted, to go there. You're a wanted He commodity. tried to hit on me. I didn't want to go, but I thought, I've got a good relationship with this guy. Right. I will show him some face and show up for the interview and see what kind of contract they offer me. You never know, but it was in a, cr a place I didn't want to travel to and it was inconvenient, blah, blah, blah. So I go to the interview. You're very much about travel times. So yeah, no. Whenever they, I, because I've looked for There was roadworks well. again today. How are they still doing roadworks? The roadworks were finished. <laughs> Why is there more roadworks? <laughs> what are they doing? It's at night time too. <sighs> they do the roadworks at night. Goodness sake. Um, but yeah, they asked me a, a question. They don't know why you're exploding. They, yeah. they asked me a question about, um, I always forget, like qualitative and quantitative data. Ah, I, right. I can never remember the difference. So quantitative is quantity, how much of the data you get. Like, and qualitative is like the quality of the data. So, like, if you have data that is, like, been well-researched and has multiple varying factors that are accounted into it and is given to you by more reliable samples versus quantitative data, which is given to you by a lot of various sources. So, it's heaps of numbers. Heaps of numbers. Right. Like, what is more valuable, more quantity or more quality? Quantity, so it's in the name. Quantitative. Is that really what it is? As far as my understanding. Okay. It's in the name, quantitative, qualitative. Okay. Quality, quantity. We'll look it up afterwards. Say, uh, let us know in the comments. I remember if I just like, pulled that out they, of my when arm. they asked me that question and I just took a long <laughs> sip of my drink. <laughs> and then I kind of gave a panicked look to my old boss and then he rephrased the question and I answered it. Okay. okay can what, we do, what, what, what can we do? Can we do role no, play? No, no, no. Like, role play, role play. We still got some no, role, role play, role play, role play. No, 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 no. This is great, this is a great role play. Okay. So Mark, 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 in this business, you know, we're in a growth period and during a growth period there are a lot of different factors we're going to take into account and one of the things that um, you're going to have to be across is a lot of data that we're taking in and in your experience, you know, what do you lean towards? Or are you quantitative data or qualitative data? <laughs> I mean, what I mean is it like a lot of stuff or just shit, not so shit stuff? Oh, yeah, a lot of stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It was okay. great. Yeah. Great role player. Up here. I didn't get that I, job. Uh, just didn't? FYI. Oh, he nice. felt really bad about it. He felt really bad about having to turn me down. I was like, I didn't. I, I didn't say I didn't really want it, but I was like, that's okay, I understand. You know, I, want I genuinely didn't want that job. And you know what makes it worse? Go for it, tell me. I had just bought 
a new cell phone. And when I was on my way to the car park to get my car, I reached into my pocket just to check the time, pulled out my phone, dropped it on the ground, the screen smashed, I had to get it replaced. It almost cost me like half the value of the phone. <sighs> Shouldn't have gone to that interview. I should have just said, no, thanks. I'm not interested. Wow. It was a real crap time. Bad job interview. It was an awful interview. I did really. It was the worst. I didn't prepare for it because I didn't want the job. Right. It was genuinely quite awful. And I broke my phone. Right. Just for me trying to be nice to my old boss. What a dick. Do you think this relates to like issues you have with your mother? Yeah, probably. Everything comes down to I love issues. you, mum. Your mum seems like a lovely woman. She is. Wales, Italy. You picking the Italians for the spicy meatball, uh, or you think Wales are going to get up and do it? I picked Wales. I picked Italy last year in a similar situation. And Wales, not even that similar. They were both. Italy was getting plucky losses, and Wales was getting pants losses. Mm. Um, but this year, Italy should have beaten by France. Rides, France and beat Scotland, <laughs> and Wales have not been close. So you're going Wales then? Yeah, I want to say Wales. Okay. <laughs> but I think I want Italy. I think Italy. I, I, my head says Italy, but then my head also says, nah, Wales will find a way. So. Yeah, I think so as well. But it would be nice to see Italy not get a spoon for a change. But they might not get a spoon. That's true. They're in a good position here not to get a spoon. Ireland against Scotland. So Scotland fighting for a triple crown, which as I said, would be the first time in 20 odd years. So it's and it's the one I always forget about, but it's genuinely a bit of silverware. Acting, singing, dancing. And the Irish are on 16 points. England are on 12. So... They could still potentially not win the Six Nations, but... I think it could be a cracker of a game. It's a game that I would not be blown away if Scotland managed to find a way. But I think there's a element of that big brother kind of mm. notion. And you saw that at the, yeah. the that semi... It was like it was like a... It was a knockout game, basically, wasn't it? I want to say a an eighth final. Mm. Not a quarter final, it was yeah. an eighth. Where they both... Yeah. yeah, Ireland have had the wood over the Scots for years. I don't know what it is. That's, I think like at home, the, Scots, the Scots have beaten everybody else in that time in the Six Nations, but they haven't beaten the Irish. I think at home and yeah, with a th with, uh, you're coming off a loss. But I think Ireland, uh, Scotland will also have a point to prove, not mm. only because they're up against Ireland and really desperate to get a victory and mm. you know the triple threat and all that sort of jazz, but just coming off a, a loss to... Mm. Um, uh, to Italy, they want to show that they're, they've got more metal to them than that. And then France host England really spicy that one mm, the um, le crunch le crunch what a turnaround what a turnaround from twickenham 40 point the victory mm. what, we should, should we people were talking about this could be another france over england at twickenham it could be the same thing yeah. also someone mentioned a good point i think it was on reddit that this six nations is going to make next year's what's that netflix series called what was it called uh, not drive to survive full it would make it pretty tasty wouldn't it yeah we might find that more about the Andy Farrell Steve Borthwick thing yeah 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 but there's I a bit of drama there two barbecues yeah um yeah a little bit of saucy drama um I wish we knew I wish we got like that, uh, that uh, because like in, in UFC there's, there's a little confrontation they'll talk to the fighters or the coach or something and they'll be like what happened you would be like he called me an F and F and F or right. something like that. And you're like, oh, that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Person um, who fights for a living. Not nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, what am I saying here? What am France, I England, tasty. I don't know who's going to win that game. Yeah. I really, it's a pick for me. 50-50. Yeah, both sides had pretty good shifts in this most recent round. So I think yeah, it's incredible. England have done... Like, they get a lot of shit. They get so much shit, but they made a semi-final. And they lost by one they point. They almost made a final. Like they people, were one ox and shea yeah, from yeah, making a final. For everyone who's like, oh, well, they had an easy run, they still almost beat the Springboks. Yeah, they got as close as the All Blacks did. Exactly. And as close as France did. Exactly. So, and then up until this point, I mean, the only game England's lost was against Scotland. Hmm. They're second place. I mean, I know they weren't going into this round, but still. Can they still win the comp? Yeah, I mean, they're on 12, Ireland's on 16, so I think they would need Ireland to not get any points, and maybe they'd unlikely. need to get... Yeah, it's still unlikely. Well, but, what a turnaround. We're getting a, um, the greatest rugby championship under their belt. Exactly this right. mob of team. There you go. Well, no, six Nations. Six Nations, great weekend of Six Nations. Great. Mark, 
Quick question for you. Mm. Was there any other rugby this weekend? Super rugby. Oh, super rugby. Super Honestly, terrific. It, it don't switch off now. It's been bloody good. It has been. And we're going to start masturbating furiously. There's a lot of people who are just like, oh, I don't watch the rugby. Since the South African team's left, it's crap. Or yeah, it's like saying, yeah. I don't do anal unless you've tried it. Yeah. Give it a crack. It's, it's different, but <laughs> this is the best season so about far. Super rugby, yes, yeah. I'm talking about super rugby, not freaking anal. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. My dad watches this. Sorry, Gazza. Does he really? Yeah, he tells me he does. How much does he watch? I don't know. Maybe I should quiz him. Yeah, be like, what did you I'm, think about that point when me and Tony were going on about penguins down in Antarctica? Like, was that after the anal bit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, you watched it. <laughs> At least up until like an sorry, hour. Gaza, sorry, Gaza. But honestly, Gaza. Super Rugby, this weekend just gone. Yes. All of these games are close. Yes. The biggest defeat is 10 points. And yeah. that's the Crusaders who are winless yeah. after three games. And one of the biggest problems... And the, the rugby's entertaining rugby. Crack and rugby. And the Aussies aren't rubbish. The Aussies are not shit. Like the Waratahs could have beaten the Highlanders. They, they should, should have, have beaten, beaten the Highlanders. They should have beaten them. That Fanta Pants ganger and the, tampon yeah. head should have got one And down. the Reds beat Sorry, the high-flying... Like the Reds against the Chiefs was very much like England-Ireland. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The Chiefs were miles ahead of everyone else from two games. And then... They got beaten. They did get beaten. And like last minute stuff. Yeah. Exciting. And like it, it's warmed my heart to see a, not a full Suncorp, but a relatively well attended yeah. Suncorp of like young kids just going ape shit about a rugby team. Yeah. You know, like getting into it. The fans like, yes, we got up and we won that one. That's yeah. great. And our team lost, which sucked balls, but yeah, not a great weekend for me. No. Well, the, the Warriors lost. The um, the Warriors lost, the Blues lost, and we bloody lost the Test match today in a position we should not have lost it. Cricket. Did you watch Waratahs Highlanders? I... I'll get to your other sports at the end. Okay. Uh, yes, I did. Waratahs should have won. They should have won. They, I remember they... I looked at all the stats, and the Waratahs had all of them. What is what's his name? Ned Med or something? Ned. Ned. Tain Ed Med. Ed Med. He. Uh, His goal guy, kicking leaves a bit to be desired. Yeah, he's a, he's a solid player around the park. Mm. And he obviously plays with his heart on his sleeve and all that sort of jazz. But yeah, you wanted him to get that kick. Mm. Yeah. If you didn't watch it, the Waratahs literally had a last minute, very kickable penalty to, I mean, not easy, but 35 kickable. meters out, about 15 meters in yeah. from the touch. Yeah, Andre Pollard gets that kick to win the game at the death kind Absolutely. of kick. Absolutely. And he, he missed it. Yeah, so. yeah, he just pushed it. Yeah, it was a nervy strike. It was a nervy strike. So they 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 lose twenty three twenty one in a game. I think they should have won. Yeah, the Drua beat the Crusaders twenty to ten. Now the Crusaders were I think ten nil up after eighteen minutes and then didn't score any more points. Oh my. The conditions looked tough in Fiji. <laughs> This they, looked, they looked this tough. Ju- I was there in Fiji earlier in the week. Mm. As I said, I played a round of golf, and if you're not in that heat, you, it's hard. I know. People got a hot place. It's hard to understand. But like, it, you saw them when they had tries, they were just tipping bottles of water yep. over their head. Like, just walking outside my uh, my hotel room, I would like my um, sunglasses would f- like fog up. Fog up. Yep. It's just like next level heat. Like, yeah, like you, we just you had to spend the whole day in the pool, just in the pool in the yep. water. Like playing golf was just like playing it in the Sahara. Yeah, and like. I cannot imagine trying to run around and play professional footy, and I can't imagine playing professional footy at the best of time. Mm. But and that, but when you, every second park you pass, or most parks you pass, there's Fijian blokes throwing a ball around, so they're used to it. And mm. they, the Crusaders, they, not so much. Well, they said we scored a try. The Fijian yeah, guys scored a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny that. And uh, like, it's just lovely to see the crowd getting into. I looked at because oh, I was there. I was there, the, I was there the weekend earlier. It was super uh, magic round or whatever it was. And I super was, round. Yeah, super round. I was like, I wonder if it's going to be a game in Fiji. I wonder if we go. I would love to have gone to mm. a, a game and um, to see that. game. You missed the super round because you were in Fiji. It was all right. I think each I day. All of it. I don't. I don't know. I don't even know who, if the Blues won or not. The Blues won. Who did we play? We played a rugby team. Who did we win against? Who did we win against? We played the Australians. Waratahs. Waratahs. I think there's so much rugby going on since then. My brain doesn't retain yeah, it. Yeah, I, I try. Yeah, I didn't catch much of anything. All I watched was you having a big old bitch about the commentators. 
which just really made me laugh. Look like Do you want to talk about that now? Well, no, any other? Uh, the Blues played the Canes. The Blues. Yeah, the Blues lost to the Canes down in uh, Wellington. I think we the, the Canes, walking weed wounded. The Canes were looking really good, but the Blues also picked a six-two split and had both their back replacements on within fifteen minutes. And a hollow for the um, looks Canes. like a beast. Josh Ooh. Morby looks great. Ruben Love set up a couple of tries. Yeah, he looks like, classy. Yeah, it's just all around good from the Canes without Jordy Barrett as well. Yeah. So that uh, was 29-21. And I was, my only concern about that game was watching Talia being relative. Like, he was working his ass off. He was tired. He was so tired. It looked like he had a net. He was holding yeah. an injury. And he just couldn't go off. Exactly. And they were just giving him the ball constantly, and he just wasn't able to do shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Brumbies beat the Force. The Force once again blow a big lead. They don't seem to have the I legs. I didn't catch any of that. I haven't seen Yeah, then the, uh, the Force, two weeks in a row, they had it against the Rebels in Super Round. They had a massive lead. And they and shut the bed. Yeah, exactly. And then they had it against the Brumbies in Canberra as well. Good starters. Yeah, not good finishes. It's Harry like my, Potter. It's like my sex life. Got like get himself. him with all the moves and then... Pfft, it's all it's, over. It's done too. Done. Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Harry Potter got a yellow card again. Was he going for the snitch or... He keeps going for the kickoffs on the restart and clatters into people while they're still in the air, which is Typical not smart. Typical seeker. Exactly. So the Brumbies, Brumbies have been a bit lackluster. So they got hammered by the Chiefs. Like in Super Round, when you looked at the fixtures, you were kind of like, oh, that's going to be a blowout. That's going to be a blowout. But Chiefs, Brumbies should be good, but the Chiefs spicy. flogged them. Oh, really? That was so the then real going depth. Into this... So the Brumbies, uh, they came back and they won 22-19. So the Reds would have been like, we got to be really up for it this week. They blew the shit out of the Yeah, Brumbies. exactly. Because the Brumbies are traditionally the best. Yeah, Australian but the Brumbies people. have looked... Pretty flat. They still got the win, but it was unconvincing. How good is this that we're actually talking about multiple competitive games? Because yeah, exactly. the last few years, it's just been us shitting on everyone and us only getting excited about the local derbies. Yeah. You know, no, it's it's, it's been a it's, it's been a fantastic. It's been a damp squid of a comp. Last yeah, couple. like the, the good game. You need some parody. You need to go yeah. into a game genuinely going. But you're not getting the Bledisloe back. Yeah. Okay. You need to know that the games genuinely have a chance for either side to win. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, honestly, it's been really good. What? Watch it, please. So you can be interested in what we talk about. Yeah, it's the rugby's been great. Do it for us. Pick if a not, team, if not yourself. Yeah, pick a team. When was the last time you did something for yourself? That's all you need to do. Once you've got one team, you can at least get that little bit invested. Yeah, it's not quite the same, man. Oh, sorry. I'm but gonna, still, we're meant to be wildly positive here, aren't we? Pick a team. Thank you for the check, NZR Plus. Appreciate. It. Even without them, I think I would still That's, be bigging yeah, up the call. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been very entertaining. Um, Wada Pacifica lost to the Rebels 29-23. That game looked oh, like no, really I, poorly attended no, because no, no, it was a late to switch game, to Hamilton. I just want to mention one incident that I saw in the cruise. No, the uh, Reds. We haven't got Reds, to the Reds game yet. No Reds and Chiefs. Yes, we haven't we got, got to. Okay. Can we talk about it? Okay, twenty-five nineteen. Oh, the Reds we'll get beat to the there. I thought we were talking about. Oh, awesome. Sorry. Just go with it. Keep rolling. Go. That hit that Lenua or whatever his name is, what is his name? What? Oh, I forgot his name. Fino on Lina? Fino. It was dirty. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, my God. It was so bad. Oh, my God. It was so lovely. It was so amazing. It was awful and totally gets the rules. But and it he was, got away with it. He got it penalized. Was that was straight it. from the schoolyard. Like, late hit. Late hit. Big just forward on the back. Totally mothered him. And like, he went off. Yeah, just abs. If you have, if you watch the highlights of that game, just to watch that one hit, it yeah. was one of the most powerful, yeah. brutal. Like, and it was like he didn't hit him high. He did wrap an arm, sort of, but it hit was him late. just he hit him late. I think yeah. he he to be fair on on t- what Fino. Fino, he had his head turned, yeah. and was definitely was committed He's into committed, it. Yeah. But he he was. The ball had been passed a good half a second before, and but he was... I'm not pulling out. He was <laughs> launching himself through the air to an yeah. unsuspecting liner who was just absolutely just... He body bent in ways. He clattered him, yeah. He, he had to go off after and that. And then, like, drilled into <laughs> the It was big it was, it, was yeah, it was just savage. glorious. Yeah. Like, not great. And the, and the Aussie commentator's like, oh, I'm not yeah. But it was just, as an observer... It was great. Of somebody who likes... Big, Big body hits. contact. It was. It was. It gave you an earl. It gave you a Doris. It got your Savia pumping. There you go. It really did. It was good. 
Uh, Fraser McBride stuff. was cracking. Like, he's, he's in demonic that form. He's in demonic form. That try that he scored was a cracking try. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Reds are on. The you Reds are playing some good rugby. The Les Kiss is their new coach. He's yeah. always played attacking rugby when he was over in the premiership. And, like, yeah, they just seem to be rejuvenated under him thus far this season. So, really they pleasing. They not big Brad Thorne anymore. Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's a bit of positivity because Brad's quite serious. Yeah. What you need to do? Just yeah. Pull your finger out your ass. Yeah, and work hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Moana what? Pacifica Rebels. Moana uh, Pacifica have not been like last season. Moana Pacifica were just easy beats. They would basically be coughing yeah, up a bonus point. I thought that they. I thought this would be a good challenge for them, but they the, were down by quite a lot. And then they came back to lead by a point, and then they still ended up losing it. At by the, a bit. Yeah, by a bit. So 29-23. Yeah. But there was not much crowd there, but it was a late shift. It was supposed to be up in Northland, but the ground has had issues, so they moved it to Hamilton. Not many people went. They're a nomadic team. They are a nomadic team. They don't have a home ground mm. this year. So Moana Pacific is still a bit of a problem. In they that. don't have... Where's the fans? No, are they in Auckland? Because Auckland's already got the Blues. We've already got the Warriors. Yeah. We don't need another team. The idea that... Like the Tongan and Samoan community are just going to be like, oh, we'll support these guys because they're called Pacifica. I don't think has yeah. panned out the been, way they assumed been it would. They've lifelong fans of the Blues. Yeah, exactly. Right? These people have been brought up watching the Blues yeah, or watching yeah, the Warriors. Yeah. So why would they just suddenly switch to a team which is losing every week? Yeah, yeah. Totally. Doesn't have any kind of big star players. Yeah, like it'd be their second team. Maybe, yeah. yeah you're going you're gonna to shell out. The yeah, Atlanta, but if like, you're only buying tickets to one game each weekend, you're going to go to the Warriors or you're going to go to the Blues. You're not yeah. probably going to Moana Pacifica. That's why they're attending has been rubbish all season last yeah. year was there, was there any call for this team well no there's always been call mm. for like if, we I need think to if, give respect to if they actually had their if they're in Tonga or Samoa I yeah. think they build a fan base you get Absolutely. people attached because that's their team but when you're in Fiji there's Drua jerseys everywhere, everywhere right. you know, and people are wearing Drua merchandise there's yeah. Drua players on the billboards they're all over the shop mm-hmm. you know not quite as much as the sevens players, right? But there's Drew or shit everywhere, right? You know, like it's they're, they're rock stars. That's where the fan base is. It's not South Auckland. No, sorry, but that's just we already have you a heard team it here. here from Mark from Morgan, me. not Jack Morgan. Don't not, get him confused. That guy plays for Wales. He does. You don't. You have stopped playing for Wales. I didn't quite make the cut. Oh, you're close though. Exactly. Um, are that all the games? You've never been to Wales. No, I haven't. That's all the games. Super rugby. But it was a cracking round. Great rugby all round all weekend. Close games. Hats off to all the players. Upsets. We love it. Uh, the uh, Wellington woman did a controversial hucker. That again. has been in the news. <laughs> uh, again. That's been the biggest news about Super Rugby Alpiki, I think, is the, the fact that these <laughs> girls are doing a politically themed hucker. They do a hucker and they in one of the lines they They call the government rednecks, apparently. <laughs> And then they say, honor oh, no, the treaty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well. Yeah. I've never been that much. Like, I'm not really into politics, so yeah. I don't really care. Yeah. But I certainly know that if I was looking to get political inspiration, People I'm no, probably not taking this, it. They, they, they did yeah. the hucker in the first place, and it got picked up. There was a, yeah. trans, a relatively uh, offensive translation yeah. towards the, um, the government, the current yeah. government. Who have had a new government? Have had some relatively controversial new uh, change in policies from the old government. Policies that some have been deemed to be anti-Maori. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, there's been one specific, relatively controversial bill that's been la- launched by Seymour. Seymour Buds. Uh, <laughs> what's his first name? Uh, David. David Seymour. To have a referendum around the true yeah. meaning of the treaty, which has sent an absolute shitstorm around people because the treaty is and the founding a, the, document of New Zealand. There's a heap of... The treaty of like, the, 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 Maori, oh, yeah. the Maori influence on the New Zealand women's rugby teams is massive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't know what the percentage of the demographics are, what percentage of the population is Maori. But certainly, those women's rugby teams are hugely overrepresented yeah, 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 by absolutely. Maori players. So You say overrepresented? Isn't that like like they uh, there's more players? There's a high proportion of them. Yeah, overrepresented sounds like this. So it's you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, they, but the, they did this hucker. Yeah, and it said this relatively offensive line because it's you know they're a democratically elected government. Yes, you know, so a lot of people voted for this government and yes. they're doing things and all that sort of thing. Whatever your take on their policies are, 
and the CEO came out and said, oh, we're disappointed by that. We're not going to uh, do it again. We won't do it again. But they did it again. Did it again. They came yeah. out and they did it again. Yeah. Um, which is down. kind of funny. Um, I mean, it's good to get that competition in the news. Yeah, but it would be nice to talk about the rugby. Rugby, that's uh, They yeah, won. They won the game. So that's good. But Tahir Prop did it. Was, yeah. yeah. But I mean, do you take your politics from sports players? No. When like Israel Falau was going on about his religious beliefs, were you like, that's the guy I want to <laughs> listen to? Like, no, I was really. unsure about whether I was going to be a Buddhist or a Christian, <laughs> but Israel Folau, I'm going with that guy. Like, they just but they're chuck people, a ball around. They've, that's got a, fine. they've got a platform. Yeah, you've got you a know, platform. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but a, I remember when Israel Dag years ago, like, he tweeted out, like, John Key's the man who freaking love John Key. I'm like, shut up, Israel Dag. Like, just throw the rugby ball. <laughs> that's your job. Like, he, um, he, what do you know about the economy? He and um, Jonah got in trouble. Jonah got in trouble, too, uh, because they did a... On election day, they did a pro national. Oh, you're not tweet. allowed. To, yeah, there's not a lot of advertising you're not allowed, you're on not um, to, election you're not allowed day. To advertise, but there was their own personal Twitter. Yeah, I know. Because like you're not allowed to have like you know most places will have election banners. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. And there's like, no billboards allowed on no election billboards day. Allowed on election day. Yeah. So I always forget. Who I just don't for. like the politics stuff personally. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, that was, is there any other talking points? We got it more into that than I thought we would. Yeah. Me as well. You know one thing, if you ever travel to China, In China? And if you read Chinese. If I read Chinese. There are a lot of political slogans and banners up everywhere. Honor the people. It's like, you know how when it's election time here, there's banners and shit everywhere. Like, yeah. You're like, well, always- their slogans are always God awful here as well. You know, there's things like, but they're not better. Do you, do you want a better country? Vote for us. Yeah, like, but they're not better economy. Vote for us. But it's part of. We're a, doing it for you. We're not doing it for ourselves. But it's part of a wider working democratic system. Yeah. Whereas in China, it's like the party is good and the people are happy. And I'm like, who are you to tell me that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not part of your people, but don't you just tell me that? There's a lot of political slogans, or like, there's the core values of socialism, and it's like patriotism loyalty like, well, you don't, you've got to be loyal I think loyalty was one of them but yeah I just I can't stand that wherever I go All right. whether it's here whether it's there and but if you haven't seen that crap I complain about it in Two Cents on Tour which is my other channel and I also sweat buckets in my last well my upcoming Fantastic. video in your, well, can I tell the people some exciting news about your life? Yes. So at the end of this month, there'll be... Sorry, by the way, we didn't let you know that there was going to be a break in the podcast we last f- week. We forgot. But we'll give you a full warning. At the end mm. of March, there'll be a break for... We might We might be able to do an online we, we episode might do or a, two. We might do a sneaky one, but there, it may not be as consistent as mm. it usually is. Um, because Mark is going to be... Jada. Back in Jada. For the yes. sole purpose of getting some more footage for Two Cents on Tour. And because my wife needs to go see her parents. Yeah, that. That too. Okay. Are you going to say, what do you, you kind of explored the crap out of Wuhan. I'm going to have to travel, yeah. Yeah. I might go to Changsha. Changsha. That's the province where Mao is from. Oh. Chairman Mao. Wow. Yes. Well, that's, that's the city, but that's the provincial capital. Can I ask you to do of something? Of Hunan province. Can I ask you to do something that's controversial? Ooh. Whilst you're in Wuhan, go to see the the bio lab yeah, or whatever. Yeah, go is. see the lab. Someone go else f- has already done it. Who Sabana? gives a rat's ass? Like, just go. People, nah. comment below if you want Mark it's to go. It's just a see- building. Yeah, but then just talk some shit. Go try and get inside and like do some dramatic music. I don't and want then, like, to get arrested. Get, uh, get someone to nut punch you or something. I'd rather go eat some food and talk to some locals. Try and go to the lab. Go on, you go to the lab. And then I also want you to... With a camera in my hand. Yeah, yeah. And then if you can This sounds like a great you idea. can't get much luck there, go to the other theory. The market. The wet market. The guy that got sabbatical went to both. What's that? Sabbatical, who's a guy who does travel YouTube videos. Yeah, but like, he went nobody, to both. I don't know who that is. I know who you are. I'm okay. sure you can do... You can get your shit together. You're in Wuhan. Comment Wuhan's- below if you want him to pick his nuts up and do something, you know. That, yeah, that would get some views. You'd be like, the lab, I went there. The wet markets, I saw a bat fuck a pig. Like, That's another <laughs> F you have to bleep out. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um, other, I mean, we need to talk briefly about other sports. Oh, yes. I watched... What did you watch? About 10 minutes wow. of some Premier League football Ooh, la, la. this morning. After the Wales and France game... Yeah. Manchester City and Liverpool were playing. They are both towards the top end of the table. 
Well, I the, used to support Liverpool back in the day. I'd, I, I'd be hard pressed to say I, I'm a Liverpool I, fan now. I, I'd be hard pressed to say I'm a City fan, but I would call myself. I, I, right. Yeah. And I was with them before they got money. I just yeah. worked in the I UK was, with the guys. Well, I used City to fan. follow Liverpool back when Rafa Benitez first started coaching them. Get so, in. Um, it was a one all draw, and I found myself, as I watched that 10 minutes, I kind of remembered why I don't watch much football. Can and be it's a touch boring. Too touch. much play acting. It just. Oh, yeah. Pff- Flipping gets on my tits when these guys it. roll around and flip themselves down. Well, I just can't stand it. There was the other day, right? I was watching some NHL because I like a bit of the old NHL. The Islanders are on a six game winning run after second. Their coach got a new coach. One of the players, they had a little collision. And as the guy was going down, he looks at the ref. Is it a ref and ice hockey? I think so. And he just goes like, ah! uh, he gets sent to the penalty box. You're not yeah. allowed to do that shit. Love if you that. appeal for like a foul, you get sent to the box. Well, I think, um, I think rugby should do that. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't mind it, but I, I don't know why you need to get so wound up about the play acting in football. Let me finish. But like one of the things that I notice in life and one of the ways I try and stay calm most of the time is when people act exactly as I expect them to act. If I know somebody who's a bit of a loud mouth prick, like I'm looking in a mirror or something, uh, and they act that way, yeah. you know how somebody would be like, so-and-so do this, I'm so pissed off, they always do that. I'm yeah. like, why are you, shouldn't you expect it? Yeah, if they yeah. always do it, I mean, just expect it and then you don't, I wasn't don't have to be like pissed yelling at the TV watching the game. I was just like, oh yeah, this is why I don't watch soccer do anymore. role play? I'll be the TV. <laughs> You it be, was the Liverpool players doing it as well. They were appealing you be, for a penalty. You'd be the guy watching TV and, tu- and just turn it off and like just get a little bit like miffed. And turn I wasn't off. even like that. I was just, just like... Mm. Turn off t- on the TV. I was watching on my computer. Like on the computer? Okay. Okay. Can you like get miffed or like... But I wasn't that miffed. Just, was... just give, me a, give me something, something. Uh, football. I think I did my part. There you go. Perf- perfectly. Honestly, I wasn't mad. I was just like, oh yeah. That's football again. That's, that's, what, yeah, well, there you go. Like, just for the amount of football I watched, which was literally 10 or 15 minutes, the amount of play acting I saw yeah. was quite high. Yeah, right. And I'm not a fan. Well, can I tell you what I watched over the weekend? You were upset by the cricket. I, I was, I'm devastated by the cricket. Mm. I, we... <clears throat> The, we have a test series right now against the Australian cricket team right now. We lost the first test relatively handily. Mm-hmm. Um, second test, we had a shocking first innings, but we really played hard to get back into it. And we had a position where they needed to get 275 for victory. Anything over 250 in a fourth innings is, oh, is a tricky chase, tough chase, hard chase, unlikely most of the time. Mm. We had them four for 34. Which is a good place to be. Then we had them five for 80. Which was not bad. Pretty good. And when, then they had a 138 run partnership. Then we got two wickets and two balls from Ben Sears. Got Stark for a golden duck. Is uh, Stark batting that high up the order? Well, no, it's like number seven at that stage. Isn't, I would have thought Stark would have been there at number 11. Well, no, yeah, no, well, he's, not, he's not a bad. He can, okay, he can, that shows can, you how much I follow cricket. He can, he, and then Cummins came in, the captain, and he put on 32 with Kerry, and they won the game from. An almost unwinnable position, and it just broke, broke me. your heart. Yeah. Broke me, absolutely broke me. And the Warriors lost the opening game after all. It was a sellout fight. crowd. Do you think the Warriors so shitty, shitty. can retain the hype if they don't have a winning season? Well, this is my fear with the Warriors because there is a lot of fear with the fans. Yeah, well, I'm not a fear with the fan, but I they they take me on a roller coaster. The Warriors. Or never have a good season when people expect them to have a good season. Right. Last season, they, they always were kind of written they, off they have, and they did well. They're a bit of a Scotland. I often get written off and play like shit as well. Okay. But oftentimes, they, whenever they've had a good season, they get written off and then they pull through or something. Right. They have been hyped up as like potential title threat, mm-hmm. title threats for this year, especially within New Zealand. Like the Up the Wires movement is still going and. They've never done well when they've had all that pressure on them. So I am very hesitant, scared. Mm. I really, really wanted to get that victory on Saturday night, but what was, was the and score? we were we played beautifully for the first twenty minutes. And we're up twelve nil, and then I think we ended up losing sixteen twelve. Mm. And we had so much time on attack at the end, but just couldn't bring anything cohesive together, and it was just shit house. Mm. 
Yes. Roger Tuivasa Schick was out there. Mm. Mm, playing in. The commentators of Super Rugby like, well, John Kerwin likes league. He played for the Warriors. I saw him play for I the like Warriors League back too. in the day. I like. I wish we could have this our scrums be a little bit more like this. The reason I made that video, I was a little bit ticked off. The one that got me though, uh, that you the point you made beyond I, I the, the scrum stuff, I can empathise with. Like, I don't. I'm not a massive <laughs> scrum fan. Like, I, I, I don't want you to change the rules about scrums. I don't like it's. You, you would like to see it done a bit faster. I'd like to see them a bit faster. They suck up a lot of time. They're not particularly entertaining, and the penalties at scrum time piss me off. Right. Like either way, what I would like to see is the scrum stay exactly the same, but penalties are gone and they're free kicks because they're not in intentional fouls. They're t- fouls that are just made through lack of strength and ability. You know, if you lock, knock a ball on, that's made because you made an error. Like you did a lack of talent. <laughs> like, and it's a it's a free kick. You know, it's, it's a knock-on. I would like free kicks instead of penalties. Nah, That's what I would like. I can't take that, but anyway. Bah, let's, let's just watch 20 minutes of scrums. Let's just... Don't change anything about the rest of the game. And then, like, well, let's just make it league. League does not have breakdowns. League does not have lineouts. League has, it's like, six tackles. There are so many different... The scrum is not the defining flipping factor of rugby. But it's one of them. It's No, it's the... Oh, it's the oh, just Having a big scrum as a weapon is such a cool part of the game. Is it cool? Yeah, you see a team who's who, like cut the other team up and they knock the ball on and you're like, oh, you're in trouble here because you're going to get still, monstered. If you can get monstered and the guy's under uh, like uh, like under pressure and he fumbles at the front and then it's a knock on the other way, that's fine. And I'm not saying that take don't take, don't take anything away from the scrums. Keep them exactly the same. I just don't want people to win games with scrums. Like I just don't. It's just boring. And we've no. I, I can't take it. I'm afraid. Sorry. Boring. That's no, not. <laughs> well, let's go again, the boys. Can we make sure we're standing on the like keep the body height high when we're going in? <laughs> I th- well, apparently then. I think you went down before the other guy. I'm not really sure. Uh, like, and it's just guesswork a lot of the time. Like, uh, like, and th- there's a lot of dark arts to it. I think part of it is genuinely we don't get insights into what's going on there. Yeah. Like the commentators, yeah, are yeah, literally, yeah. the commentators will just be like, well, I'm a winger. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> it's a lottery. I've never been in a scrum like, life. There was actually, you that, know, that- one of the sports that I watch from time to time is is a bit of the old sumo wrestling and we've talked about this yes now sumo if you're looking for a sport with stoppage is virtually no action yes and like a minute if you're lucky of action like the guys walk out into the ring they get kind of announced they do their records what's their win loss record for this tournament and then they faff about in the ring doing all the ceremonial salt throwing and stuff and then there's like they do like 30 seconds of pushing and shoving it's grandeur it's, it's and then the they're ceremony off. yeah it's mostly ceremony yeah it's like more stoppage than the nfl right like it's a slower thing to watch but when the guys are coming in for their contest you look like you're holding a they, couple of they, they, they balls. talk about like this guy against this guy like what's their head-to-head record this guy dominate like this guy's got a positive record this tournament this guy's a negative but this guy a negative when he fights this guy he usually wins and he usually wins by grabbing his belt and pulling him out like because they measure how did you win did you push a guy out did you yeah. flip him did you trip him like there's all these various ways to win i feel like if rugby had that kind of and it's, it's interesting you insights said that, you know like oh ethan de groot he's a great scrummager but oh geez he struggles when he's up against you know this guy from the reds or whatever you know what i mean yeah, yeah they yeah. don't do that at all they just go whoa i don't know what's going on they fell down to the ground There's two points like there that was one of the most interesting parts of the full contact episode with mm. the irish um what's his porter name? porter when yeah. he was talking about antino they actually build that yeah. clash yes and like this guy's a monster yes he's, he's, he's so hard to and that was gave you that kind of mm-hmm. that kind of context and there was one an analyst who's done it well the um the english guy who sadly got cancer i think he's okay now um what's his name and he was a great a fantastic um lucid or a tight lucid prop i think 
Um, do you know the guy, the English guy? Can't and, think he, of and he did some YouTube breakdowns. I right. think they got taken off YouTube. Oh, so, really? Where he'd be like, this guy's pulling his left shoulder. Yeah. And, and he was like going into the minutiae of the movements. Yeah. And he said, you can see here, he's actually squeezing in tight yeah. to make a second effort here. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, that's actually really See, I think if rugby had that, if they actually told you and had experts telling you what was going on, I think it would be a more entertaining thing instead of just, well, I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's collapsed again. I guess we've got to start this. Yeah. Year. Yeah, well, like, like the, I mean, Wildcard did a video about it, a big rant about it. It was, I know, it was I know, fantastic. I know. And he talks about the NFL and that. And like the NFL does that kind of stuff well. It does the stoppage commentary well about what each team's planning, about what they're doing and their moves and stuff. Like, I don't watch much NFL, but they make the stoppage part entertaining enough. All the pundits are backs. Yeah. There's very few pundits that are forwards. Yeah, I know. Like, and that's and a there's problem less, with the game, there's I think. less pundits that are front rowers. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, so maybe that's part of the problem mm. too. I feel like it is. Can you name a, uh, Moore, Brian Moore. He was a prop. Yeah. Oh, he's a hooker. Hooker, yeah. Uh, well, Sean Fitzpatrick. Yeah, there's not many. Even he's more of a pundit than like a live commentary guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I do feel like it's an area of rugby just kind of lazies out on, just like oh well. Like I love like there's one guy in England, Austin Healy, who's a real like people hate him because he's a real prick and he's real negative. But I love he's it when he's on prick. commentary. If like he, he always thinks he's right, which kind of pisses me off. Like he'll see someone like you know pass it. He's like, oh, I should have held it there. Is that, that is that the guy trying to pick a fight with Squid? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. um. But every now and again, he'll like look at the way the back line is set and be like, this is what I think they're going to do. They're going to do this. And like, then you see it happen. And you're like, bro, that's the kind of stuff that that's adds value mean. to the commentary. Yeah. So and sometimes they do get it right. Like, yeah. Because they are. He explains at a high, very, mm. very high level. But anyway, yeah. The one the, that got me though that you mentioned was, um, what's the name of that? Joey Wheeler. Joey Wheeler going, talking about Patchell yeah. with his offload. And I thought that was your key point. Like, he just doesn't. That's, that's the arrogance. Like, and we are all, we can be guilty of it. Like we, New Zealanders play a very attractive style of rugby and we're taught about, you know, ball in yeah. hand, draw the man. Yeah. And, like, you know, keep the ball alive. Yeah. Da, da, da. Not to the level of Fiji or anything yeah. like that, but like, but that's the thing that pissed me yeah, off. Reese Reece Patchell you see is the footy everywhere. Reese Patchell is not the stereotypical what we would have considered Northern Hemisphere ten. No. He played for the Scarlets, who are a really attacking team. So the idea that he's just like, oh well, she must like There's always kick for the zero, corner. Zero, zero. He research. just he just doesn't know who he is. Zero, zero. Yeah, yeah. that's lazy, isn't it? Yeah, I find that annoying. Yes. Well, on that bombshell. Anyway, I need to pee. I do too. Race you to it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this podcast. It was on Spotify if Tuesday, you listen to it. iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts. Wherever else you get your podcast. Look, he's I'm already taken away. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.